So we seem to be going through an unprecedented amount of tech layoffs in the past two years, which is leading many of us to wonder, is coding even worth learning anymore? So I came across this video from CNBC titled, Why Widespread Tech Layoffs Keep Happening Despite a Strong US Economy. So I thought it would be interesting to react to this video and sort of look at the situation of the tech job market from the sort of big picture economic environment. Because actually a little known fact is that I have a economics degree and I'm quite interested in economics and I'll be researching this a lot. So what I wanted to do is react to this video, see what they have to say and then offer my own perspective on top of that because what I think is that what's happening with the tech industry is slightly and actually quite a lot different to what many people quite realize and it actually goes a lot deeper than simply AI or these things that people talk about. And after all of this, we can then answer the question of exactly how can you still stand out in this industry? What should you do? Should you learn coding or should you do something different and everything like that? So let's get started. Before we start though, this video has no sponsor, but I do wanna tell you about a free resource that I created to help you pass tech interviews. Now, the thing about tech interviews is that you're going to have to study and practice a lot of coding problems. Usually people do this in a site called Lead Code. But the problem that you're going to have when you go through this process is that you have no idea which problems you're actually supposed to practice. When do you know you have practiced enough problems? When do you know you have covered all the problem solving patterns that they actually test in interviews. So what I did is I made a list of the 75 lead code problems that are like widely accepted to cover everything that you need to know to pass tech interviews at any of the big companies like Google, Meta, Amazon, Netflix, etc. And I put these questions inside of a Notion template, which you can get delivered straight to your inbox if you sign up using the link down below in the description. And that template will also include solutions to all of these problems. So you can just go through and tick them inside of this little template as you go through them and then look at the solutions if you get stuck. Again, it's completely free. If you are, however, looking for a full paid program to teach you all the foundations of data structures and algorithms, if you're interested in that, I also have a paid program called Algo University that can take you through all of that. That will also be linked down below in the description. But with that, let's get into the video. Hi, Brittany. Hi. Thanks for meeting with me and Rosie. Um, we have an important meeting today we finished our evaluations of 2023 performance. This is where you have not met Cloudflare expectations for performance. We've decided to part ways with you. Yeah, I'm gonna stop you right there. This is a viral video posted by Brittany Peach, a former employee of Cloudflare, a San Francisco-based tech company. The video posted on January 2024 and got so much attention that it may have kicked off a new subgenre of viral video. So people might be getting laid off, but at least that is launching them into viral careers as TikTok influencers who talk about how they get laid off. So silver lining, I guess. Layoffs are also plaguing industries like healthcare, banking, and media. However, the tech industry is the one that's been dominating the headlines. This layoff and everything that's happened in tech, I think is pretty eye-opening. You know, like you can have your dream job, you can have your, oh, it's my dream to work for Microsoft, or it's my dream to work for AWS and you get there and you realize, huh, okay, it's just like any other job. It's a great place to be. There's a lot of great perks, but at the end of the day, they can get rid of you like that. Now that's definitely a good point that we always need to remember about any sort of career. So obviously there's like two sorts of careers you can have. You can have the job nine to five, a career where you work for a company, or you can have the self-employed career that I've personally chosen myself. And the idea seems to be that the self-employed path is the risky path. You have no idea what's gonna happen. You could fail any moment, like the market is brutal. But the reality is that it's almost even more risky to just rely on one job. When you think about it, if, if you're self-employed, you have many clients, many customers, but if you lose your job, which you can lose at any moment, by the way, then suddenly all your income just goes away. So this sort of stable path of just having this nine to five career isn't necessarily as stable and secure as people like it to be, especially in an environment like this. So that's why I always recommend to not just rely on this one income, especially in tech, try to have a side hustle, do something on the side. So if something like this happens, you're not necessarily going to zero straight away. But let's keep going. The start of the COVID-19 pandemic was a dire economic event, at least at first. 
The tech industry, though, boomed. In 2020, tech's top seven companies added $3.4 trillion in value. The Fed's emergency moves to bolster the pandemic-hit economy, like cutting interest rates to near zero, helped boost tech stocks. This move helped the tech industry to expand and went on a hiring spree as people were confined to home. Amazon added the most number of employees during this golden period, peaking at 1.6 million employees in 2021. It's the case everywhere, but especially in tech, that when interest rates go down, what that basically means is that it's very cheap for companies to get more lending and to get more funding for them to fund their new projects and things like this. And when that happens, that is when these companies will start to focus on growth. And what focusing on growth means in the context of a tech company is that they are going to hire a bunch of people because now that hiring is essentially cheaper because getting the funding to hire these people is much cheaper. They're going to focus as much as possible on hiring as many people as possible. Capital was really cheap, you know, so you could get loans, you could get money. Access to capital was really affordable. And then you see as interest rates went up, and you start to see that that growth in headcount didn't translate to growth in profitability and access to capital became uh, quite a bit tighter. You saw many companies start to hit the panic button. 80% of Twitter either left or quit or was pushed out, laid off, whatever you want to call it, and yet the website still runs. Um, do you think people are looking at Elon Musk and thinking, you know what, we really need all these people? The thing about tech specifically is that once you have built a tech product, once the code is already there, once it already works, like technically, and I'm oversimplifying here, but technically you don't need all the engineers that you needed before to build the product because now that the product is built, the code can just sort of work on its own. Contrast this to something like a restaurant. When a restaurant hires staff like waiters, the waiters are sort of maintaining the business. They're like actively running the business rather than growing the business because it's not the kind of thing that needs to be like built. So that is really why tech as an industry is a lot more like this, where it like goes to really high highs and really low lows in terms of like head counts, where something like a restaurant, while it is affected by the economic conditions, it's a lot more stable because the tech companies, they will specifically look at situations when it's cheaper for them to hire, when money is cheap. And that is when they will hire all the engineers to build as much new projects as possible. And this leads to this phenomenon of this like employee farming, where they will just hire as many employees as possible. And it is very true that like in the case of Twitter, like you don't need all these engineers to like maintain the product. So in these situations where interest rates are higher, they are going to, and they're almost expected from the investors to like lean down and just focus on efficiency rather than focusing on growth as they did in the previous cycle. So you think AI has already hit the business effectively? Oh, abs absolutely, especially in the tech sector. I mean, they've been talking about it for years. Now the fact that you have more companies moving toward artificial intelligence and they're looking at the fact that as opposed to paying somebody $200,000, $300,000 a year to do the job, I can actually use artificial intelligence to do the job that they used to be able to do. This AI thing is real, it's not going away, and they can't have people holding them back. And so what they've been doing over the past year is finding places within the organization that they can trim so that they can get to a place where they're shipping faster, so taking managers out, and then engineers who are like skilled for a previous generation of technology, they're also leaving to make room for people who are more skilled for artificial intelligence. AI is definitely playing a role in the layoffs that we're seeing. Uh, automation has increased efficiency for some of the workers who are able to, to utilize AI to make marketing decisions, to analyze data, to serve customers more efficiently and effectively. So AI is a paradigm shift. So there's two points here. Like I think the role of AI is sort of overhyped in this whole situation with programming jobs. I'll get back to that in a moment. But like, first of all, like just Again, like taking a step back in the big picture, it's entirely natural, and I've talked about this before, it's entirely natural that as technology progresses, as society progresses, as humanity progresses, that certain things, certain technologies are going to replace like older jobs. Like if you imagine that we never invented tractors, for example, we had to have like 10 times more farmers to farm our lands, would that be a better world to live in? Like. Of course, for the farmers at the time, they would have been scared about this, but the reality is, it simply is that as technology progresses, we as humans, if we want to stay relevant, we have to keep upskilling ourselves. But I think anyone who really understands software and like it's like being in the industry and stuff understands that the real value from code and from software 
doesn't come from these like basic tasks of like writing up the HTML. It comes from the infrastructure, understanding the concepts, understanding the logic of programming, how to use code to solve a new problem. But the thing with AI is that by definition, AI pretty much cannot possibly replace the actual value generating part of software because AI, by definition of how these like language models work, is that they simply take old existing information from the internet, like whatever the data is that these models have been trained on, and they're simply able to generate stuff from that old information. So essentially, they can only, by definition, just rehash old existing information. It's not actually generating new insight or new value, it's just rehashing old information. Although, it does mean, of course, that the brutal truth is that you need to keep upskilling yourself. You cannot just stay at this basic coder level who just knows how to write code syntax. You need to sort of get to the level where you're able to use these AI tools to solve problems with code rather than just write the syntax. The tech industry used to have this shiny image of having big salaries and unlimited perks, but the recent tech layoff stories have completely shattered that image. I really don't have any regrets about posting it or what's happened. Um, I think the bigger picture is that I've been able to be a voice for people who have gone through something similar. You know, the stories that I've received of people who were laid off 20, 30 years ago, and they still remember to this day how that made them feel. In my experience, the public sharing of things like one's layoff, I think, is partially due to the fact of the rise of social media, such as TikTok, um, even YouTube Shorts. People are becoming much more comfortable with sharing their experiences. And oftentimes when layoffs happen, people feel shame when they are being laid off. In reality though, oftentimes if people are being laid off, it's a failure of leadership of that company. I think that's absolutely true. Like really, if you're getting laid off from one of these companies, obviously a terrible experience and it might make you feel like, oh, you're not valuable, you, you can't do anything. But really, it's the failure of the company because they were hiring just way too many people in the first place. And I think overall, long term, is almost a good thing because like the thing is, for the past few years, there's been so many people getting into tech, not because they're actually interested in tech, not because they actually want to do tech, but because they saw these massive salaries for these jobs where like supposedly they didn't even have to do anything. And that's just led to a massive over influx of people getting into tech. So now that we're sort of getting back to reality, we're going to get back to a situation where tech, like it's not going to go away. It's just going to stay a very strong market, but it's no longer this overinflated market that it used to be. So what is next? Data suggests an influx of layoffs in the tech industry starting from the second half of 2022 and peaking in 2023. Some non-tech sectors are also seeing widespread layoffs. A prime example is UPS. The courier giant raised eyebrows by announcing 12,000 job cuts in January. The media industry... This is the thing, like, it's not just a tech thing. We, that is the thing we need to remember here is that if you're thinking like, oh, I'm going to quit coding because there's layoffs, then the question is like, okay, what are you going to do instead? So if you're quitting coding and you get into, I don't know, banking, I mean, I don't know the specifics of the banking industry right now, but chances are it's not going to be any easy. And from what I know, having also like been in banking in the past, it's much more brutal and it's always been a lot more brutal in banking in the first place, just because things aren't as easy as they were in the past it doesn't mean that suddenly tech is terrible or that you shouldn't get into it. Again, we're just sort of getting back out of the sort of overinflation that we saw in the past. The sort of summary of this in my mind is that there's two things happening. There's the economy, which was really driven by like things that happened in the pandemic. And this is causing companies to shift out of focusing on growth. And then we have AI, which is also making it easier for companies to lay off employees that weren't really focusing on something valuable in the first place. Like there have been companies that have literally have teams of people just like moving around the buttons on some website. Like that's not something where you're supposed to have so many engineers in the first place. So really we're just getting back to reality. What does this mean for you? Well, it means that Yes, brutal reality. You can't just be a basic HTML programmer. You have to have a general good programming competency on the logic of programming. And if you do that, it will still be fine. But really what this means for you is that if you learn to code right now and you just don't quit, the economy will eventually come back up. It always does. And just imagine how easy it will be for you if when it starts growing again, when interest rates go down and companies start hiring again, and at that time, everyone will think like, oh, coding is not worth it anymore. So there's less people 
competing for these jobs when their jobs start appearing again. If you're the person who at that moment has learned to code and is ready to now get these jobs, imagine how easy it will be for you. Just keep going. And if you just keep going, I know that you can do it. If you wanna learn more about exactly what is sort of going on and whether being a self-taught developer is still something that you should consider is still something that you can do. I made this video where we sort of continue from this to talk more specifically on exactly how you can still stand out even as a self-taught developer amongst all these like computer science graduates and things like this. So go watch that video next if you're really serious about this. I'll see you in the next one.